Hey everybody. How's everybody's evening going? So I was supposed to have a good close up cam set up. I got it set up and working yesterday. And then it didn't work when I tried to set it up earlier today. I wasn't getting the right feed. It was just showing me a still and it was showing me blank on live stream. So that's annoying. <clears throat> so we're going with the older setup. I was going to have an extra scene with a really close up zoomed in like manually focused shot, which would have been super nice. But it is not to be apparently. Um, so tonight I've been, I was planning on doing, starting on Vax. <laughs> I'll take it, whatever titles I can get. Um, so Vax should be okay. Uh, he seems pretty well cast. His nose looks a little funky, um, but we'll see if that causes any issues. I noticed the knife in his right hand is supposed to have little like sharp edge bits on it on both sides, but it only has it on the one. So that might be a problem. I mean, it's not going to be a problem to paint. It's just unfortunate. I figured I'd get some more detail on it. How's my audio doing? Am I loud enough? Am I coming through okay? I was really thinking about doing Vax in green and bone color, which could be kind of cool. Green, bone, and brown. Excellent. Loud and clear is always good. Now I gotta make sure my camera's in the right spot. And I don't get my face cut off. Okay, that looks alright. Check, check. Uh, the bear will be coming along as well. Um, Let's see what we can work with. I'm going to start by starting to do the cloak's definitely going to be green, but I want to get a dark base coat on it. Uh, hopefully, we get some good, uh, good conversation in chat tonight. And uh, let me know if I'm popping out of frame because I had to make some adjustments. I keep changing the camera angle trying to find the perfect one. I might need another stand or a slightly higher stand or something like that but it's tricky. I'm not sure what to get. Where is that? Line it up. Yeah, good enough. Good enough. All right. I think I'm going to start with this scurvy green. I'm going to use it as the dark undercoat. I'm going to go grab a fresh paper towel to wipe the brush off with. Like four minutes in and I already figured out something. It's all right. It's okay. Get my brush is out of the way. Or in just a different spot. That's probably going to get in the way later. All right, give me my base coat brush. Or my large brush, whichever one I really work with. Hopefully it doesn't go crazy. Where's the best spot? Right around here. It's trying to get some base coats on an Abaddon mini. 
You're like, ah! I hit the bear. I hit the bear. Okay, saved it. Get the bear off the pallet. Oh, hold on. Something else I forgot. I was going to use that handle. Hopefully it'll be easier for you guys to see the mini. Ugh. Ooh. Hey, kiddo. Hey, mommy. Nice. That's awesome, Noah. Good to hear. All right. Going to be pretty free with this base coat. I'm not going to worry too much about hitting other bits. As always, my primary concern is making sure the paint goes on smooth. Just being uh, nice and smooth for the base layer. We'll work on that. So what publication is that going into? Congratulations. Now, is it, was it a research item or something else? Like, uh, no, new camera, non functional, will not run. I have to troubleshoot it some more. I don't know if there's something up with the software I downloaded for it, but it was from the Elgato site. Or if it's something with the camera, or if there's some sort of incompatibility with OBS. Case study stage business cases. Huh. My brother, the smart guy. Doing fancy stuff. So I'm putting this on pretty, pretty wet. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I just want it to be smooth. So the wetter it is, the smoother it's going to go on um, until you get to a point where it just basically runs off the darn model. So you don't want to do that. Um, so you want to be a little careful. I'm just looking to cover everywhere that would be cloak right now. Um, probably a little bit of the armor too. Because it's, got, it's supposed to have feathers on the shoulder shoulder pads, as pauldrons or whatnot. So we'll see what I can do with that, because that could be a lot of fun. Some of his leathers are definitely going to be green. All up underneath, cover all the bits. He's got some fancy boots on. He's got those click my heels, go super fast, haste boots that he got during the Pathfinder days before they started streaming things live, which was basically completely broken. The main reason why he could do bonkers damage and get all over the place because he essentially had a free haste spell that nobody had to concentrate on. That's really the part that made it busted was the uh, 
lack of him having to do a concentration check if he got hit for damage or anything like that. Always on guaranteed haste. Green face. And he's definitely got gloves. Yeah, he had he always fought with two two daggers, so we always had an attack on his main action, an attack as a bonus action, and then his hasted hasted action, which could be a use item, a move, or an attack. Um and I still think he was mis miscounting some of those times, but because I thought that recalling his daggers was a bonus action. So, I think he got a little excited occasionally when it got super stressful. All right, camera sticking close. Uh, yeah, it's Vax. Uh, Vaxildan is a half elf rogue from the Critical Role uh, first campaign. He split class, he went rogue and paladin so that he could smite when he got critical hits. Um, or when he got a sneak attack or whatever. Because he got up high enough as a rogue in the assassin specialization. And he got to attempt to, to capitalize on some of those special case specific mechanics. Speaking of case-specific mechanics, I still stand by Arcane Tricksters as way higher, way more reliable damage than the Assassin Arcane uh, uh, archetype, like by a long shot. Discuss which rogue archetype is your best best bang for your buck when it comes to. Single target damage. Mastermind is a great way to make everybody else's damage awesome. Of that, I have no doubt. But I'm of the thought that as an arcane trickster, you can use one of the attack spells uh, that re that you cast a you cast the spell. Eh, I don't think so. Assassins are super super conditional on all of their mechanics. Um, you have to to get your automatic crit. You have to be completely uh, hidden from the target. They can't know that you're there. Um, to get advantage, you just have to go before them in initiative. So the only way to do that reliably is to be playing in a campaign that is allowing feats, have alertness, have a high dexterity, and have a weapon of warning or something along those lines so that you can get advantage on your initiative roll. That way you can get really high initiative. But regardless of how high your initiative is, you get the one shot where you do some damage. Whereas somebody like an arcane trickster, that came out a little quick, uh, can cast an attack spell and by level five, the cantrip attack spells add a bonus die to your damage. So you're essentially increasing your melee damage. Uh, say you use a short sword, or if you really kind of twink it out, go for a rapier. So you're rolling a d8. You've got... We're just talking straight rogue. You can split class and do other fun stuff. Good night. My daughter is not going to bed. Love you, kiddo. I'll see you in the morning. 
Um, but when it comes down to it, the Arcane Trickster has an extra die on top of their sneak attack damage, and it can be a fun one. I I prefer Booming Blade. I believe so. I don't I don't think rapiers rapiers are finesse weapons. I mean they might be. Are they martial? If they're martial weapons, then it might be tricky. So it may just be short swords, which are d6s. Somebody check. Somebody check. Um, the uh, regardless, say you're using a short sword. We'll we'll keep it to the, what we know actually works. Use a short sword. And with the short sword, you cast Booming Blade. Booming Blade allows you an extra sneaky d8 if you are below level 5. If you are past level 5, it adds a d8 to your attack if you hit them. It's not a concentration or anything fancy. And it has a conditional 1d8 thunder damage or 2d8 if you're up, up at level 5. Um, this, where is his hair? Is it tucked in? Yeah, I think his hair is tucked in. Uh, anyhow, uh, D8 thunder damage, extra for fun times. So you pop in with your move at level two. You shank him, hopefully next to a buddy. So you get your sneak attack bonus. You hit him with the booming blade. And then you back off using the remainder of your movement. doesn't have to be a full crazy move. Like you can just move in 15 feet and then move out 15 feet. And then if they move, they take D8 thunder damage. So they've taken your short sword damage. They've taken your uh, sneak attack damage. And if they move, they take another D8. So at level like 2, it's like 1D6 for your regular attack, 2D6 for your sneak attack, I think. Um, 2 or 3d6, uh, 1 or 2d6, and then if they move, they take a d8. By level 5, I think you're doing 3d6 sneak attack, 2 or 3d6 sneak attack, your regular d6 attack, plus a d8. So you're going up to like 4 dice at least on your attack. Um, and then if they move, they take 2d8. Yeah, there you go. Rapiers, rapiers. So 1d8 plus another d8 at level 5 plus your d6s for your sneak attack and then if they move they take 2d8 after that. And that's cantrip every time. Go for it. Have fun. Um, in that regard I feel like it's consistent damage. Now if you get a critical hit you roll all those dice again. You add them up for rules as written. Whereas with an assassin you have to stack a whole bunch of other conditions on top of that to get your special. Doesn't happen all the time. Arcane Tricksters and all the other guys aren't contingent upon getting initiative, like getting their highest initiative roll. So. Boots, boots, boots. Or maybe I just do him all in green to start other than his head, which I'm hoping to get a slightly different hair color. Get this nice dark green all over the place. Stay in frame. But I feel like, I feel like assassin archetype is kind of a trap. Because assassins are super specialized, they're conditional, and they don't get the cool other bonuses that all the other classes do. All the other rogue archetypes. Arcane Trickster, tons of spells that you can play with for other beneficial effects. Crowd control, sneaking around, unlocking things, you know, invisibilities, all that fun stuff. Um, mobility effects, once you get to enough different levels where you can start picking things outside of the illusion uh, and I think enchantment um, 
Mastermind for the ranged assist action, which is awesome, plus all the other fun stuff, combat bonuses and whatnot. <clears throat> the actual thief for doing fun things with lock picking. Oh, and Arcane Trickster also gets to be able to use Mage Hand to do lock picks and pickpockets so they can do sleight of hand at range, which is fantastic. I know. I know Luke likes the assassin. I think he got his assassin bonus how many times? Total? During the entirety of that campaign? Way fewer times. Way fewer times than an arcane trickster would have capitalized on extra spell damage. It's just my opinion, though. Maybe if you get the right items, um, you can make it a little more reliable but really you have to have like a weapon of warning and some other fun stuff <clears throat> okay that looks a little wet i'm gonna switch over to a trinket real quick got a little bit of the armor left to do underneath so i want to hit that real quick Again, I'm, I'm basically just using this stuff. Tinny tin. I don't need a whole lot of it because I'm just picking out the corners. And where's my 3-0? So I do have that Discord server up for voice chat. The only thing is I don't know how to separate the Discord chat and the audio from that from any other audio like from my microphone so anybody who is chatting in discord would end up coming over in the live broadcast which hmm, probably I don't want to have put that responsibility on people in the discord right now so I don't want people swearing or forgetting that they're being recorded and saying something they might regret so it's primarily for your guys's benefit soon i'll figure it out i need to get like an audio mixing board or something like that so i can set up a bunch of different inputs and then I can route inputs live and go from there. I'm a little sad I couldn't get my super close up camera working properly. For a bit I had it working, sort of just testing it and uh, I could zoom in so you could see like my fingerprint and detail in my fingers, the fingertips. So I was thinking it'd be fantastic for getting in close to the minis. Buttocks. Getting the bare butt. Trying not to get it on too much of his butt. I'm going to try and get Trinket finished because he's not going to be too difficult to do. Like once I get the armor kind of trimmed up, I don't have to do a whole lot else. I'm going to dry brush him, get another layer slightly lighter on him, and then I'm going to use a watered down ink wash to kind of blend it and then probably another layer of dry brushing, but that's about it but I gotta get his black nose and stuff. So I'll move him to the side briefly. Come back over here. All right. So that'll be a good undercoat. I get my regular size Vallejo brush. 
This is the number one. Brush size is about that big. No, it's not an if you're brave enough challenge. It's just that in the entirety of the time that he was playing that character, he really only got the assassination bonus in like four or five times that I can remember over the course of three and a half years. Where's my skin tones? All right, try some of this. I'm gonna go with the pale flesh. Luckily for me, I only really have to go around his face because I'm pretty sure he is gloved and otherwise completely covered. Try and keep the pace up tonight a little bit. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Feels like it's a little too wet. Let's move that around a little. Yeah, he's got little bits of hair hanging over his eye. I think he's got his ear kind of poking out the back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically cover a lot of those other details and I'll hit it on the way back. Oh, I also had a thought about how to get, I was thinking about painting eyes, right? They're a pain in the butt, but I was thinking that if I do them first first and keep up with my practice of painting things that are nearest to the center of the proverbial miniature in close and then working my way out I might be able to get a tiny bit of an off-white in the eye socket and then essentially just paint the face up to the edges of it so I'm going to give that a shot backing some of the paint out of the eye yeah it doesn't focus properly like I'm at the very extent of where this camera can focus it's gonna be hard I need better cameras All right let's get back to my super little using a little bit of this very pale wolf gray. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time you are. And I might be right now if I can get it to work. But part of this is me trying to figure out if there is an easier way to do it. <clears throat> I'm kind of sticking with my philosophy of painting the middle bits first. But realistically, what I'm trying to do is get in here. And put the color and drop the brush. Put the color just where the eye sockets are. Just basically fill the entirety of the eye socket with a color. You 
you can't see it. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I'll get some pictures. I'll post them up on Facebook and Instagram. We'll get some close. We'll get some some follow up on this. Somebody make me a note. All right. Let's get back in there and make sure that the flesh tone around the face is correct. This guy, like the Vax Mini, had a lot more of the um, casting flashing than I was used to in the other one. The other one seemed a lot cleaner. Vex seemed a lot cleaner. But this guy's got a lot of uh, mold lines and corners and stuff. You're not going to be able to see that very well. That's passable. He's got a weird cleft in his nose. I don't know if he's supposed to have a flat nose in the front or what. But it looks a little strange. He's got like a weird pig nose. Thank you very much. That's a perfect place to put it. See, there's a mold line back here where his hair is going. And it runs right down this corner right here, and it, it's bugging me a little bit. All right, Delirious, important question time. If I was going to do these in green, brown, green, brown and bone, um, do you have a preference with the leather? Should the leather be a creepy bone color? Should the leather be brown or should I keep it dark green and then make all the accent bits um, the bone color and the belts and things be brown or black. Question for you. These are your figures. <clears throat> oh. All right. In that case, I'm moving ahead. Get everything all tight in here. It's all up in my face. The thing about putting in a darker base coat underneath everything is when you're going in and doing a second layer bringing the colors up, you can leave those cracks. 
if you miss a little spot in the deep deep corners it gives it a natural shadow so you don't necessarily have to worry as much about it and that is the point of doing your undercoats and depending on which way you're going with a miniature sometimes it is better to do a dark undercoat and sometimes it is better to do a light undercoat if you're thinking you're going to have a lot of really crazy bright colors, a white undercoat is really good because it makes the colors pop a bit more. If you're going for something dark and brooding, Edgelord McRogi guy, go for a darker one. But right now, I am just going to try and bring this up a little bit because I want to get slightly lighter colors in here. We're going to have a little fun. I painted, years ago I painted a unit of Eldar Striking Scorpions in a very, very rich green with bone accents. Um, I picked up a lot of the colors and I brought a lot of those colors up to their crazy bright green. And they looked pretty cool. I'm kind of thinking about trying to recreate that a little bit. Hey, how's it going, monkey? If you if you guys stick around till the end, remind me around quarter of 10. I uh I was painting with a couple friends last night, and toward the end of the night, I had decided that I was going to attempt to do the water transfer decals again, and I hadn't done that in years. Uh, and they came out really, really well on the bases of my Blood Bowl team. And I'd like to uh, I'd like to show you guys how they came out and explain how that works. If I had if I had that zoomed in detail camera, I could actually probably show you the process like real close. But that is gonna have to be for a different night. Guess that ain't working. Hopefully everyone's week has been going all right. Nobody's been too beat up by their jobs, although I've heard some stories from folks, so I know that that's not entirely the case. I'm sorry for that. And i got to move this camera around a bit. Again, I'm looking for a better position for most of my gear still. I need to make myself some sort of armature that holds the cameras up above so they can point down directly and I don't have the constant issue where I'm pushed out of frame by like the handle of this of this grip Eventually I'll get it. It's going to take a bit of trial and error. And I 
thank you guys for sticking with me while I figure it out. This is a small production. I don't have a crew. Well, you have game tomorrow. I don't. I'm going to be working on finishing up that Abaddon model. I started him up. Oh, I do know what to do with this. I'm excited to get to him. I'd like to finish with him. He's kind of intimidating, though. I mean, the mini is just a lot of stuff. And he's got this enormous cloak that I have to work around, which is the real challenge. Because it is just huge. And pretty much in the way at every conceivable step. But if I had assembled him, I could have put him together, but I wasn't. I wasn't the one who was going to put him together. I'll know in the future. I'll have to take a closer look at the actual figure that I'm commissioned to paint and be like, all right, you can put all these bits on, but don't attach X, Y, and Z because they are going to get way in the way. And I'll just work around that. Yeah, uh, I took an initial picture of like the sort of base coat layer that I've got done on it. Um, I've got the uh, armor all base coated. I've got the the ground and the dead space marine on the base with its its first layer on it. Um, I think they're going to end up being space wolves on the ground uh, and I did the purple base coat for the cloak um, I'm gonna go back and probably take care of the base coats for most of the metal bits So that it all sets up properly. And I feel like once I start, once I get on a good roll with him, it won't be a big deal. But it's been a little bit, a little bit of a bear to get started. Mostly because I know when I get going on it, I'm going to stick with it. And I'm going to not, not stop until he's finished. And then I'm not going to be able to stand up afterwards because I'll be hunched over him the whole time. I need to get myself set up with a standing desk because it is way more comfortable if I can do this standing up. Like maybe if my desk was up a little higher, so I wasn't leaned over so far, but it's just not the way it is.
I'm going to try something. May or may not work, so we'll see how this goes. face with a little bit of a flesh wash, darken up some of the creases. And again, I don't need to do a lot of skin. It's mostly covered. the hair with it too because I want to darken that up. It's going to end up being a blonde but I don't want it to be just like bubonic yellow something horrible. I feel like the the detail on this face isn't great. See if I can get some of this out so that he has more of a face. So what I noticed um, doing the Vex model was that she was super small compared to some of the other minis. They're like 24 mil and it makes a huge difference that particular size. is brand new. So I'm going to do some of this stuff. Agrax, Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to hit the green with it. I'm going to see if I can blend that down a little. Feeling like this green might not have been the best choice. It isn't necessarily the green that I'm going for, unfortunately, but we'll work with it. I'll figure it out.
Yeah. That's sort of jade-ish, jade green. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I think green might not be good. We'll figure it out. Come around to it. I'm going to let the ink dry. So I'm going to move him to the side. I think I'm going to grab trink it again. And what we're going to do is grab the dry brush. So this is a Vallejo Tori dry brush. P5504, and I'm going to work with this one, and we're going to pick up a real nice pale white. I'm going to do Arctic white. It's a polar bear. May as well. Yeah, that jade green was a pretty good color. Let's see what I can do. Maybe we'll get back to it. If I do a quick glaze over some of those sections with it, it'll bring that color back down. And maybe I'll just change his armor. I'll bring his armor to a uh, into the browns. It'll probably look better that way. Right now, he's just very, very green. But again, 90% of the time, I hate the miniature until I'm done with it. So we'll see what we can come up with. It's okay. It's okay. It's not great. Okay. With dry brushing, you get the brush pretty saturated and you get the majority of the heavy stuff off of the bristles. And what you need to do is basically get in here and lightly drag it across. And what's going to happen is it's going to hit mostly the upraised sections. I mean, heck, this, this brush is actually pretty darn good. I don't think I'm going to have to go back and do any sort of ink washes or anything in here. I'm probably just going to leave it as is. Because there's just a little bit of a difference.
probably going to take the white and actually paint his ears. Dry brushing is pretty simple though. Once you start getting a feel for how the paint goes on, it really kind of, it's very uh, straightforward. And it's just a matter of getting the right pressure. Don't know if you guys can see that coming up but it actually is making a big difference. It's turning more white and you can actually see the light, light gray underneath it. thing with dry brushing is you're working up with the color you're basically taking it and slowly bringing it up to where you want it to be so again it's a slower process and the more gradual you do it the better it'll look I'm not going to worry too much if I clip the edges of the armor because I'm going to go in there. The armor is going to get a little more detail work done on it and I can always bring the edges up. And plus, having it be a little silver on the corners or a little lighter on the corners actually looks pretty good. So we're going to bring him up a bit. in here, get all the sides done, and you just keep going, just work your way around. And gradually bring it up closer to white. It's not too bad. It's working out. It's coming on up. Yeah, it's probably pretty hard for you guys to see it just because of the way my lamp is set up. <clears throat> but whereas last time he ended in a very gray, pale gray state, he is definitely coming up to a white state right now.
Yeah, it's working out. Again, just be careful and slow because if you have the brush too wet, if it's too heavily on the bristles, it's going to just paint it and then you're going to lose that detail. And you're going to lose that fur texture. And what you're trying to do is just get the ridges because it's going to give you the illusion of the fur. We're doing a lot of reapplying the paint to the brush, wiping off a lot of that paint, getting it to the right stage so that you can hit and get through here and actually get into the spots and have it show up properly. It's a slow process, but it works out pretty well for picking out details in a ridged kind of surface like fur. So just take your time. Make sure you build up the color slowly. If it, if it builds up too quick, you've got too much paint on the brush. <clears throat> you want to leave some of the deep recesses in the darker color because that's okay because it's where the shadows live. white bear big white bear just dry brushing all around a couple of layers go across it a few times Again, not too worried about getting it on the armor. It's actually easy to paint over the lighter color with that tin color, so it should be okay. That's not bad. <clears throat> Just 
to get the white off of that brush, rinse it thorough. Sometimes when you're doing dry brushing, because you're whipping the brush around really quick back and forth, you end up bending the bristles and getting some of the paint a little deeper in. So, to be thorough, get it clean, make sure you don't have to have any weird splayed bristles in the future. Dry brushes have a tendency to get that way, if you're not careful with them. done not quite ink takes a little bit all right let me get black because I think I want Regardless, I gotta do his eyes, his nose, and his claws in the black because as Naf had posted in my Discord last week, the cutest little polar bear picture, very, very black claws, nose, and all the other little teeny bits, super, super cute. Anybody joining, I do have Vax. He's on the side. I did an ink wash, so he is drying up at the moment. And in the meantime, I'm trying to finish up Trinket a bit. We're working on getting his nose done. We just finished up the fur. For some reason, I feel like my black didn't mix. because it is not coating very well. Let me shake that up a bit more. La 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 la. <laughs> I may have to switch over to the Army Painter Black. I feel like that went on a little better. Uh, we'll see. That'd be weird. That'd be weird if the uh, Vallejo Black was the one that didn't coat well. No, oh, it's just real. It's real wet. Get in the eyes. And then we'll go down to the toes. All right, where are your claws, dude? This is just going on like ink. It's a little weird. And I double checked, it's not the actual, it's not the black ink. It's 
a little strange. All right, quick pivot. I'm going to pull out the matte black from the Army Painter set. Yeah, I don't know if it didn't mix. I used it not too long ago. I don't know if it's like not mixed well or if I didn't shake it enough. We'll try it again a little bit later, but I'm gonna take the matte black. From the Army Painter line, which is this guy. We're going to see if that does any better. Because I'm going to do it on the other foot. Yeah, the, the difference is huge. The right paw, that's the Vallejo black. The left paw is the Army Painter black. And the Army Painter black went on as a paint, a pigment, whereas the other one went on almost like a wash. Little weird interesting difference I don't know which one I like better match and the only way I'm going to get on a match is if I do this kind of full paint both of them and then what I'll do is I'll go back with a little bit of a highlight but yeah that was a little strange I was surprised I expected it to go on thicker and it went on way thinner than I expected, so I'm going to work around that. Treat it almost like a like an ink wash over the white base. It should still look pretty good. I was just sort of surprised. But now that I know how to deal with it, I think it'll look fine. It isn't that it's not good, it's just that it's behaving differently than I expected. Like there's there's a thicker pigment that behaves in a particular way, and then if the pigment is thinner, it kind of seeps into the cracks and acts as a wash as opposed to a surface paint. So interesting interesting but that's okay I got the toes done he's he's almost finished I mean realistically he doesn't have a lot going on I'll get the belts we get a good brown that one no cacao not quite I'm just trying them out uh, delirious uh, delight wanted me to paint all of the um, all of the Vale not the Vallejo with the Vallejo paints he wanted me to paint all of the critical role line of miniatures so I was doing that that's a lot of minis so in a trade for that he actually got me the game color kit 
kind of wanted to get a Vallejo kit for a long time, so I was definitely up for the trade. 20 some odd minis for a, a case was, was worth it in my opinion. The majority of them are fantastic. I was just surprised by how the black went on. I was expecting it to go on like a pigment painting over a surface and it ended up being very, very thin and very runny. I don't remember that being like that yes, earlier today. I was base coating an Abaddon the Despoiler model with it and uh, I didn't ex I didn't feel like it was that runny previously. So it was a bit of a bit of a surprise. All right, get my detail brush again. Make sure it's nice and clean. Get into that. Oh, this brown. Where was it? I'm going to use this stuff for the leather, charred brown. Okay, I'm going to turn them kind of upside down. I'm going to get this belly strap. If this was a strap on a horse, my daughter could tell you what it was. I don't remember what those are called. The ones that go underneath. Wait! It's the girth, isn't it? That's what it's called. Yeah, I'd be pretty impressed if I got sponsored by Vallejo in the first couple of months. <laughs> Just trying to get the edge of this belt because it's it's pretty big. It's funny, I keep having to mentally stop myself from calling this model Tibbers. I have apparently played way too much League of Legends. It doesn't help that I got my daughter one of the stuffed Tibbers because they were cute. Yeah, there's a specific term for the cinch belt that goes underneath the horse, and I think it's the girth. I think. If it wasn't past Leona's bedtime, I'd ask her. Yeah, pretty much. But the little the little plush version of him was pretty cute, so. I think I picked up when she was born, and I didn't give it to her until this past Christmas. Shoulder straps incoming. I'm not going to worry about painting the belt buckle just yet. 
just going to get in and get the little detail belt strap sections. If I get paint on the belt buckle, I, I'm subsequently not going to worry about it because I'll get to that later. Keeping it simple, just getting in there. Yeah, the bear's name was Trinket. The bear's name was Trinket. Tibbers is Annie's infernal shadow bear bomb that she jumps on people in League of Legends. Trinket is this guy. Although this is the white trinket as opposed to the brown. Is he brown bear or black bear? It's brown bear, right? Wasn't he a grizz grizzly style? All right. I'm going to do another little dry brush trick on the armor. Because the copper, the tin color is nice. But it is not doesn't have a lot of depth to it and some of this ink still isn't dry yeah I don't know I'm gonna have to gonna have to do some more work on that I'm not happy with the way the green is coming out on Vax so I'm gonna go and take this gunmetal gunmetal silver and once again Put a good chunk of it in my palette. Pick up a bit of it on my dryer brush, which I dropped in my lap. And what we're going to do is essentially highlight it with this right like like this this is part of the reason I wasn't super worried about white getting on the edges because I'm essentially gonna dry brush this upraised Give it a bit of a highlight and some scuffing. Get the helmet a bit. Try not to block it too much. Now I don't want to get it on the white parts, so. But just be careful and give it a real light dusting. And what's going to happen is you're going to pick up a lot of the raised sections. Kind of zigzag it in a couple of different directions so it doesn't just have streaks in one, in one way. And it's going to lighten it up just a little bit. So this is the dark side without the dry brushing. This is the side with the dry brushing. I'm going to come over here and get these plates a bit. Ideally what you're doing is you're, you're not getting into the cracks at all. So you're going to still have some of the rounded edges but you're going to kind of dust it a little with another metallic.
And the added benefit is a little embossing on the shoulders. It's going to leave very dark on the inside. There we go. Give some character to it. Now, where did I put that very light gray? So what I want to do is I want to go back to the toe. Just going to hit the edges of it to kind of bring out the Tula Claws a little. Just a nice edging over the toes. I'm going to touch the end of the nose just a little bit. And if I can get a little bit of it in the eye as like a reflection, yeah, we're good. All right, and that brown for the leather that I used, I've got a good highlight color from the other day. Still in the wet palette, and I'm gonna take that. It was a mix, so it's kind of hard to uh, describe. It was partially that scorched earth color, partially a little bit of a flesh tone color get back over to the right spot. I'm just going to touch the corners of this belt. Maybe a tiny bit of the under to kind of give it a little bit of a corner so it's easier to see. And then we're going to get the shoulder belts, mostly the upraised or at least the higher chunks of it with this highlight here, the upraised portion of the belt that goes through the loop. Just to give it a little bit of depth, get the side. So Trinket is getting pretty close to being finished, except for the base. Uh, and I showed you guys how to do the bases on the Vexalia model, but if you'd like, I can try it on this guy as well. But let's put him aside for a second and go back to Vax, the green Vax. He kind of looks like the Riddler. <sighs> Still not sure I like it. Not sure I like it. Clean out some of the ink that still hasn't dried and some of the deep cracks. Thin it down just a bit. It's too pale. If 
question is, do I switch it up, abort that part, try to adjust? I might, I might leave the, the cape this green, because I could use some, it might get super bright, but I think the leather needs to be a darker color, because it just looks weird. <laughs> hey port welcome to the stream uh yeah like i wanted to just switch it up um the person who asked me to paint the cr minis uh had said that he would happy he'd happily have them in in non-canon colors um i may actually restart the vex the vax model because i am not super happy with the greens i need to find out a good partner color for it because that green is just I don't know too olive green I mean the shading on the cloak is working well but yeah yeah cacao uh, I did um, I actually made one uh, so in the main cam I literally found a way to make one with a uh, like a Tupperware sandwich sandwich thing, um, wet paper towels and parchment paper, and it's fantastic. I I haven't used this for much paint at all. Um, yeah, it works so good. I I am super super happy with it. Uh, I'm also very happy that I can mix paints together and. Um, come back to it like I, if I need it for a highlight color and I'm doing a bigger model I can mix paints to it if I don't finish it that night and I close it up and come back to it they're still usable the next day which is fantastic absolutely love it uh, and port yeah my uh, one of the other viewers actually said it reminded him of uh, uh, Golden Compass as well and uh, I, I like those I think they're really cool so I wanted him to kind of look like that so that's kind of the way he's gone So he's basically finished, except for the, I'm gonna do brass. No, I'll do silver buckles. Brass is gonna blend into the belt too much. So let's go in there and get the buckles done in silver. The fittings all done in silver. Being real gentle because a lot of these don't take a lot of paint. Need to wash it down. Water it down just a little bit. Get back in there and mix. I think I've gone through three parchment papers so far because I get them just covered in paint. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It just saves tons of paint. Like, I just have a reserve, and I don't have to worry about it drying on the palette. It's fantastic. Thank you very much for the suggestion and sort of getting me to give it a shot. You get, you get full credit for that one. I appreciate it. It's made a huge difference. Huge difference. I just told my friend about it last night because he had come back. He was uh he was out of the state for a bit. And he came back and he came over to paint on Wednesday. And I had this Tupperware container and he's like, what the heck is that? 
So I get to expound on the the joys of wet palettes, which was a lot of fun. All right, Trinky. Other than the basing, you're all set. I think there's not a whole lot more detail to work on for Trinket, so he seems to basically be done. He's got some eyes there. He's got his armor. He's a big old polar bear. Polar bear butt. So. Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll definitely get their bases done. One second. If you weren't here last week, uh, this is the color scheme I use for Vexalia. So she's got a green gem on the quiver. The fletchings are blue and white. She got finished. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Vax is bugging me. Vax is bugging me. I'm not like I'm not liking the green as much. Granted, the base isn't finished, but I'm not liking the green as much. I gotta go through and I gotta finish some other stuff on him. We'll finish up some other stuff. I can't. I can't kill it. I can't kill it yet. Can't kill it yet. Let's start picking out a little bit of the base coats. I need to do I need to do his knives. We'll get it. We'll get it. I may have to work down to a darker green. The green is too pale and it's driving me crazy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's not quite done yet, which is the problem. So I have this thing that I've noticed that I hate the miniatures I'm painting. Like I hate the color scheme until I'm about 85% finished. Once I start getting it and bringing the color palette together with some more detail and some of the other bits, I'm start, I start to get more comfortable with it. And I'm like, ah, okay. There's a lot of little details and folds in the leather that are just not coming out the way I want them to. Oh, and the face on him. His face is bothering the hell out of me. I don't know if it's mold lines or what, but it's just not as defined. But these guys are real small compared to other minis that I've been working on, so that might be part of the issue. But... And he's got this weird split on the casting on his nose, so I can see it as I get in close and it drives me nuts. He's got like a little pig nose going on. fan something up with this one that is making me grumpy so 
so the Steamforge stuff is good. Um, and there's a lot of detail on them. They're smaller. Uh, they're like 24, 25 mil as opposed to closer to 32, 28 to 32 that like Warhammer miniatures, Hero Forge miniatures, those guys. So they're very small, which means some of the detail is great and some of it is just very, very, very thin. So, if you know, sometimes the paint will blend over it if you're not careful. Um, they're not they're not bad uh, and I did I have noticed that there is a mold line like you can see right down here straight through the mini down this way and down to his boot um, there's a seam and I shaved a bunch of it off of his cloak but it followed all the way up the edge of his cloak up along here and then up over his head so like from shoulder forward was the front and this was the back and there's a line that goes down here and that is something they need to work on. Um, it is reminiscent of the molds not necessarily being completely flat uh, together. And that will happen after a lot of production or if the mold quality isn't super, super, super high. So... <laughs> you're one of, you're the only person well if al's around but you're the only person who had interactions with the first character i played whose name was ramius so yeah could be could be i'm gonna do a little bit of I'm going to play a little bit of triage here. And we're going to switch this over. So that the leather armor is going to end up being black. I know that he was black in canon, but he didn't have a green cloak. Um, but if I can add some more contrast in here, I think I'm going to be more happy with it. Yeah. Exactly, I wish. Sort of time green never happened. Man. Was it was it Spooner that I gutted with that thing? And that silly feast event? Or was it the new guy? We'll get there. Like I said, the title of this one was trying to decide on a color scheme. And occasionally, when you're working on a mini, the first color scheme doesn't necessarily work out, and you might have to go back. And that's okay. It happens to everybody every once in a while. Yeah, I distinctly remember that instance. I was, it was like, I think it was you and Spooner and the new recruit you guys had, and you squared off, and another player slipped and called a hold, and everybody stopped, and the way I remember it was like as we were starting up that fight, I looked at you guys and didn't recognize you as people anymore. You were target one, target two, and target three. And then 
the hold happened and I had to stand there and wait and it felt like the Millennium Falcon jumping to hyperspace and having the engine shut down. I was like, oh, I got, ah, damn it. And then I lost my rhythm and I wasn't ready to go and it was all keyed up. See you later, Dad. What are we at? 9.48? Yeah, I think the black is going to help here. So I'm going to continue with him next week. And we'll work on the armor being black. I'm going to leave that jade color because I'm digging the jade color. <laughs> yeah, that was goofy. So I wanted to show you guys something before the uh, before I signed off. So my plan at the moment is going to be to go in and recolor all of his armor black. And that shouldn't be a problem. But it happens. It happens with painting. Occasionally you bump into a little bit of a mistake or you find that you don't like the color scheme you thought you were going to like. And as long as you apply your paints very, very thin and very smooth it doesn't actually hurt to go back when you go and decide to change change your mind on a color. I already I'm already feeling like this this is better. Yeah, that's going to look that's going to look a lot better with a darker darker leather armor. So what I was talking about before we leave, I'm out of my tent last 10 minutes, was water transfers. You see them, they come a lot with the uh, Games Workshop miniatures, um, especially units. So a squad of Marines or um, a Blood Bowl team in this instance. So hold on one second. So at some point, and this is, this is the drastic difference in size, if you wanted to see an example. So Port, if you were wondering, he's tiny compared to those guys. Um, so... This water transfer decal right here on the backs of these guys is something I hadn't done in a really, really long time. And I put a matte varnish on the back and they are very, very nice and very clear. And the trick to them, the trick to them is you cut out around the, the tiny little transfer. You grab one end with tweezers and you put it in a, a saucer of water and you hold it there for probably 15 or 20 seconds. And when you pull it out, you keep them firmly grasped from the tweezers and you take the brush and you kind of tickle it a little bit and it should be able to slide around with the pressure. And then what you're doing is you slide it off that transfer sheet, but instead of pushing it off the rest of the way, once you've got your bristles, once you've got like this corner down you take the mini if it's sitting down here you push them out and then you take that that blue piece and instead of moving this off you hold it here and you slide that tag out um, and if the if you keep the space where you're where you're placing the water transfer if you keep that a little bit damp after you put it on you can slide it around real gentle with your finger and get it to exactly the right spot. And I was surprised. It went on a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Uh, and I'm quite happy with the way those guys turned out. But 
yeah, the scale, the size is so much different. Um, anyhow, thanks for swinging by. Uh, for the first timers, uh, I'm happy you found me. And I do this every week. I'm thinking about also doing it on Tuesday nights. Um, I want to try and get two nights a week because I'll get a little bit more on, on camera. I'll be able to do more things. I might be able to do one mini a week where I get most of the base and a lot of the, the broad sections done and then move on to details and basing. Um, I'm going to adjust Vax so that his armor is black and then we'll go from there. Uh, I think I'm going to start that on Tuesday next week uh, at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And we'll finish him up and get the basing done. And I'll do the basing with Trinket at the same time. So yeah, I appreciate you guys coming by. Have a fantastic evening, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again next week. Ciao.